there. Welcome to this expert interview. In week two of the course, we discussed the challenges and dilemmas of doing research in the field of terrorism. A frequently mentioned issue is the lack of primary data. And this is caused by many factors, including secrecy, but also practical issues of getting access to the right people and the right places, as well as security concerns that come into play. Well, we're delighted to have an expert with us today who has turned it into her personal mission to gather first-hand data, Dr. Vera Miranova, Associate Fellow at Harvard University, who is specialized in armed conflict. And Dr. Miranova is often referred to as the frontline scholar due to her experience, amongst other things, of being embedded with the Iraq Special Operations Forces as they recaptured the city of Mosul in Iraq from ISIS in 2016 and 2017 documented in her book, From Freedom Fighters to Jihadists, Human Resources of Non-State Armed Groups. Well, welcome, Dr. Milanova. Thank you. Well, you've worked in many conflict zones, such as Syria, Iraq, Yemen, the DRC, Myanmar, and you just came back from Ukraine. So could you tell us a little bit more why you think it is important that researchers actually go out and travel to such conflict zones to conduct their research? First of all, I don't think that everyone needs to go to the front line to conduct research because it depends on the question you're asking, right? So, I mean, if you're studying propaganda or, you know, something online, why would you go, right? But uh, some questions, it's simply impossible to answer without going. So I don't, you know, like you're not choosing the methods based on, you know, what you want to do. And then I ask the question, you ask the question, then you see what kind of tools you need to answer them better. And for some tools, like I study human resources uh, of armed groups and individual behavior of uh, fighters. I mean, how can I possibly study it without a being you know, able to talk to them about their decision-making and be actually being there with ethnographic research to see the environment that they made their decision in. So because of the question that I'm asking, I don't have many other options other than to study them uh, on the front line. Yeah, so for you, it was also a realization, if I really want to get more insight into these questions, I kind of have to do this. Yes, no, yes, yeah. it's a necessity because of the question I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and maybe, yeah, you're a scholar. Could you give an example of how uh, one of your trips or the experience you, you got there, how that maybe changed your views uh, as compared to what you first had in mind based on only like reading uh, literature, reading articles or books? Like, is there maybe an, an example from your practical experience that you thought, okay, uh, this really changed my view on, on how we write about something also in more academic literature? Um, one of those episodes that really... Um... I really remember was in Mosul when we went to the base with a front, uh, with a special operation, the front line, you know, took a base <clears throat> and uh, we found different books there, right? Uh, previously, we all assumed that they're all like crazy fighters who came there to die, to die in suicide missions and, and so on. And then in a pile of books that were found, there were school books for, you know, grade one to three from, let's say, Russia. And then I was like, you know, who comes to conduct suicide mission, right? And die uh, bringing school books. Mm -hmm. And you understand they're heavy, like it's school books. Yeah. So someone actually did fly all the way from Russia to Turkey, cross to Syria, then to Iraq, bringing all those books, you know, with them. So it really, you know, kind of seen that. And I know those books, I did study, you know, based on those books back yeah. in the day. And I'm like, okay, we need to look much deeper into who those people are and what they're doing there. We could not just assume that based on their glorious, you know, lovely propaganda with flags that they all came here, you know, with a dream of dying. Yeah, and did you also manage, for instance, in this case, to speak to some people? Like, did, did you get more information? Like, what was their idea to, to bring those books, for instance? Like, did... I mean, in this particular case with the books, I guess uh, everyone was either gone or dead yeah. uh, when we when we entered. But yeah, I mean, there were other things like uh, recipes, right? We found a book of recipes, oh, yeah. uh, a notebook. Some a woman was writing it down. And uh, one of the things that, you know, was one of the ingredients, it was a very rare ingredient. Like I couldn't find it in, in the U.S. It's, it's a <laughs> Russian thing, right? And I'm like, how on earth would you be able to bring it to Mosul, you know, like to cook with? So we were so puzzled that I asked um, ISIS members that I interview who were not on the front line at the point. I just, I called them and I'm like, dude, like, 
you know, I saw that like you were guys baking, you know, that kind of cake and you use this condensed milk. How come? Like, I want this condensed milk. Where did you get it from? And they're like, yeah, like our parents, my ISIS friend told me like, yeah, my mom came to visit me from Dagestan and she brought it with her. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Like I have many problems in this sentence. Your mom came to visit you yeah. to ISIS bringing food. Yeah. You know, like how many like behavioral issues there is in this one sentence, like behavioral stuff that I actually do study, right? In one yeah. whole sentence, you know, you could make a dissertation out of it, basically. You know, parents traveling to their like jihadi yeah. sons. And then and I was like, okay, first. dude, and like, and what does she do? And he was like talking to me like your mom is visiting you in a high school and you are very embarrassed of that. And, you know, like the, he was explaining to me in the same sense, like, yeah, you know, my mom came to visit. She was worried and she came and uh, she didn't like it. So I was kind of not showing her everything. I'm like, dude, like, are you a yeah. jihadi or what? Like, Yeah, yeah, that's so fascinating. Also to see like more human side or think we think they're all only busy with propaganda and studying religious texts, but there, there's so much else uh, that's going on and more cultural things. So... I mean, the propaganda, I'm, I'm very skeptical of people who only study propaganda. I mean, yeah. not of people, but of this research. Because propaganda is something that they want us to see. So, like, we're basically studying what they want us to see. Yeah. Like, it's like, are you going to make any decisions about the quality of a toothpaste only by watching 25 million advertisements of different toothpaste? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't, yeah. right? So this thing is it targeting us directly. It's, I, I understand it's maybe important to study to see what they're using to target people, right? But to understand some kind of decision making of those fighters, you know, it's not an applicable tool. Yeah, and that's very, very good point. So if you really want to understand the dynamics of groups and the daily lives of people, you cannot just only read what they produce for us, for an audience, where they know everything is tailored towards uh, getting certain impressions across. Uh, but if you go there, you get these different stories about their mothers visiting and then condensed milk that's high on their list of, uh, yeah, of, of priorities. Yeah, so it all depends on a topic. So some topics, yeah. you know, like you could study from your office, you know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but some you just, you could not. Yeah. Do you think in the field of, of terrorism studies, this point is, is broadly recognized? Or, or do you still think a lot of people do study topics where they would actually need this kind of first-hand experience or, or field, work, field work experience where they don't really do that. What do you think is the, is the field progressing in that sense? I think the field is progressing in that sense, but still I, so, I see a lot of research being done like it's not an applicable tool. But also keep in mind that uh, the academia in gene, okay, so to do this type of research, academia needs to adjust. Like right now, it's impossible to do it being inside academia. So again, I publish in academic journals, I conduct academic research, right? And you know, I, I have my third book uh, right now finished, but I'm not in academic bureaucracy. Being in academic bureaucracy would really not allow me to do this job because you know, academia needs to change first and foremost for, yeah. to allow that research to happen. Yeah, so you say the, the environment is not really well adapted to well, allow for this kind of research to be conducted, like with all these, these forms people need to fill out, and maybe also rightly so in terms of security risks, or how no, do you experience? No, those forms have nothing to do with security. Come on, there are like some <laughs> guys who have no idea about the field, they're checking them, you know, or whatever. It's not, uh, it's not that, but like, again, you know, let's start with like teaching, right? Like you could not just live tomorrow, right? And when the war in Ukraine started, I yeah. was three days late. Yeah, you know, like I, I just took the first flight out, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, teaching it's very hard to do, and plus, a grad, yeah. it's very expensive to conduct the field work uh, on the front line. Yeah. Uh, it, it is really. I mean, it's uh, you know, equipment, logistics, mm -hmm. translators. It, it's extremely expensive. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Mosul one day work like for journalists was like nine hundred dollars. Poof! Wow. So. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's very hard to do that kind of job, like high quality, you know, yeah. for academia. Yeah. And maybe a question related to uh, gaining trust, uh, because we also discussed that in, in week two of this course, that it's really hard to get access to, to participants. And well, you travel alone uh, a lot. Uh, you're a woman in some environments. That's also um, maybe not the easiest to, to speak to people. So can you 
tell us a bit more like how do you try to to gain the trust of the people you either want to be embedded with or, or interview how how do you get them to share their um views with you or even to open their doors and their houses uh, or for you to to uh, yeah to allow you to be in and join them uh so first uh being a woman is a big plus here uh because they all watch you know hollywood movies and majority of like james bond are male so they're not you know being a female it really helps here because they're less afraid of you um but um you know how to get trust again first and foremost you need to understand that they're people you could disagree with them on something mm -hmm. fine you know i disagree on like genocide right well slightly disagree but you need to approach them as people like i saw so many people interviewing isis members like showing how they like not only dis like discuss you know like oh and or you know considering them stupid and you could see that you could feel it you know of course no one is going to talk to you like just basically yeah. so just you know reconsider in your mind that you don't agree with those people but you do respect them as people yeah. you know and uh, for example you know like showing that you could uh um i mean just basic things right like i had some isis members so i was i went to one country to interview isis members in hiding and um i needed to buy something and there was a line so i called him i was like dude like by the way we need to meet in like 10 minutes but there is a line can you please stand in the line because i'm late a little bit so like can you just go to the line and stand there and i'm gonna go and, and i'm gonna buy it and he was like okay so it's like it's weird right mm. but it shows that i approach him as a human like i would ask you to do it right or any friend yeah. of mine who is waiting for me you know just sitting in a cafe so actually it does uh you know in the mind of the person it's like oh okay like it's approached like as a friend as a as a fellow human you know because we both kind of need yeah. to stand in this line because we don't have this product and uh it does help so just assume that they're people yeah and after something you agree on you can discuss what you disagree on but only you know later on and don't judge just don't judge okay and isn't that sometimes isn't that hard for you or for anyone in general like because you might hear things that, that really shock you or discuss you on a personal level so how do you or you do you try to switch that off when you speak to them or how how do you do that uh for, yes i do try to switch it off but also again those people are not not rational right and non-rational people first of all they're either dead most likely already mm -hmm. so they're not going to be able to talk to you or they're just not going to be able to talk to you because they're just crazy so majority 99.9 percent .9 are more or less rational you could deal with them so uh, like when they're answering the question let, let i interviewed uh, recently recently like i interviewed for 20 hours i think in some of 30 a guy who was an operation zone uh, of uh, when they were doing genocide of yazidis he was uh, in charge of one of the units that were actually participating in that and um, I, I conducted very extensive interviews with him he's in hiding now and okay like we do all absolutely everyone you know agrees that you know genocide of yazidis probably is not a good thing right absolutely everyone but um he more or less including by the way but uh you know like i'm asking him to explain to me why he was doing it and how they were doing it so like i allow him to rationalize to me like what he was doing and how he ended up there running a unit so basically you know but that's what i want i don't want to judge him you know if he's going to be caught he's going to go to prison for life and you know it's not my problem but like i want him to explain so basically that's what i'm asking questions how and yeah. why yeah so let him he thinks it was the right decision absolutely great please explain to me i'm here yeah, to listen sense. i'm not here to judge i'm here to understand your position yeah okay thanks and and maybe as a final question maybe the people at home watching some people want to move more into the field of, of terrorism studies or, or counter terrorism whatever but do you have any tips for people who uh, want to start doing more field work. Um, I mean, what would you say to them? People who may be in doubt, can I do this? Uh, what would be your advice for people who are inspired to do, also collect more of those data in, in real life rather than just reading books? Mm -hmm. So you mean the people who would consider doing a frontline like kind of work? Yes, for instance, yeah. So first of all, I discourage all students who are thinking about doing it. I just, yeah. you know, like my job is to discourage and you, your job is to prove that you want to do it. 
So basically, you know, a lot of students approach me daily. Yeah. yeah wanting yeah. me, you know, to be the advisor. So I'm saying, no, absolutely yeah. not. And if this guy says, okay, you're not taking me, I'm going to go to French Foreign Legion. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> good luck. <laughs> um, yeah. I also tried to join at some point. They don't take women. But um, so basically, you know, that's an option. It's not like, I don't like whom I really don't like. It's people who now look at like, let's say me, for example, and think it's a very cool research and I'm being, mm. you know, all over TV. I need to do that to be, you know, all, all over TV. Oh, those people, bye-bye. Yeah. You know, just from, you know, because absolutely wrong motivation, what are you going to be yeah. doing mm-hmm. there, you know, not happening. So, but people who really, really want to do that kind of job. Okay, fine. So first I would emphasize languages absolutely Mm. so basically even doing phd right now you could not actually do the field work i do just because of the um institutional problems i I I discussed right so while you're still in academia which limits your work uh languages you need to be absolutely fluent in this in one language either it's russian or you know any uh, arabic russian any any of the languages you want to work serba creation whatever so that's kind of your main skill because your main job is talking to people, right? So what's your main skill is being able to talk to people. No one is going to trust you with a translator. Yeah. No one. Mm-hmm. You could not go with a translator, period. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so languages, first, foremost, and then <clears throat> try to do step by step. Like you don't parachute yourself, you know, somewhere in an old town of Mosul saying hello. By the way, I saw yeah. those grad students we had to rescue one of them it was not pleasant um so you just do it step by step for example start with going to the post-conflict areas right just to Mm -hmm. be comfortable with the environment and comfortable with how people behave right how people think so go in a post-conflict and talk to you know ex-combatants you know here and there and then start to gradually advance basically yeah. so then you know to maybe not that active front line in, when a war is already positioned mm-hmm. right and you know more and more i would also advise i know like talking about ethics and you know let's ignore it but i would strongly advise being comfortable with firearms not maybe to not only firearms but all kinds of weapons not to be able to use it which i also think you could possibly need this skill right uh but you know again as we discussed to gain trust right you need to show that you are not afraid of what they're doing so for example with one of the units i was embedded with the first thing they did when i came in and i said oh by the way i'm going to be here with you everyone hello um one guy was like he was holding um a rifle and he was like oh Vera, like can you please hold it like i need to go like somewhere and I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. And I hold it. And, you know, by the way mm. you hold it, it's visible if you know how to hold it or not. Yeah. You know, so you're mean, oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I'm going to hold it here. No problem. So, you know, he did it just to check, you know, like how you are like prepared to the environment. So I think that's from that point of view, it's extremely important. You know, yeah. if I would be like, oh, my God, that's a weapon. You know, like I would be out in five mm. minutes, like no time. Yeah, yeah. So I think you need to be very comfortable with the environment and what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, and also for your words of caution, right? Because a lot of people might think, oh, this is exciting. I want to do the same. So I'm I'm very happy you're also sharing that part of the story. Like you need to be very careful and very conscious about uh, what you're doing. And indeed, what you started with, like, what is the reason? Do you need to do this research there? Or are you looking for an exciting experience? So really think, okay, what is the best way indeed to, uh, to approach this question? Okay, well, thanks a lot for sharing your experience with us. Um, for those who like to know more about Dr. Milanova's work, I can recommend again the, the book that she wrote. Well, I need to show it here, otherwise people can see it. From Freedom Fighters to Jihadist Human Resources of Non-State Armed Groups. And your other books will come out, or your third book will come out when? My second first needs to come out oh, it's, in okay. the academic year, and my third one, like, I, I, I just finished it, so hopefully also next year. Great. So 2023, uh, your books uh, will come out. So thank you for, uh, yeah, for being with us today and for sharing your experience. Thanks for inviting me.